Obviously, but what kind of... Holy Nobody shit. Nobody leaves our house! Go! Yeah! God! Go! Nowhere! Holy shit! This is 20 miles! Go! You get back here! You get back If you see this part alone, you know what this is. Chances are you do. I know I do. This is the dark place where Satan and your chiropractor have conspired to design an amplifier. Woo! Just to get these out of the cab requires, uh, I would say, supernatural strength, levels of strength that most humans don't attain naturally. And this one's in pristine condition, very cool. You know, the owner says it's making a shrieking sound at certain times, or occasionally, or intermittently. So what does that mean for us? That means we're gonna have to warm this pup up and see if we can get her to misbehave. Can we create a set of aggravating circumstances that will elicit failure mode in this amp? Maybe it won't take much. These are the stock filter capacitors in their little cardboard shells. A stock complement of tubes with a cool little uh, sliding and or retractable tube shield that I, I think is just so cool. And they're they're missing from uh, five of the remaining positions. And these amps are pretty cool. Um, if I remember correctly, it's been a bit since I worked on one of these guys. The well, the the annoying part is Ampeg's incessant use of the twelve bh type tube and it's it's only annoying because i don't usually stock those though i should but i do see these once in a blue moon um what's what's cool about these is the reverb circuit i think it's a three tube reverb circuit so the reverb is surprisingly nice on these and by nice i'm, I'm not saying that it sounds like fender though that is kind of the gold standard it's just a, a nice lush reverb but let's see if we can go ahead and get this amp to act up. We are looking at 115 wall volts today. The temperature's cool outside. I guess no one's running their air conditioners out there. So we're going to bring her up to 100. We're going to keep her uh, in a current limited situation and see if our bulb is going to indicate whether or not we have some excessive current draw. Let's switch off this lamp here. Get a little more natural light in. So here we go. We'll switch on power. And these are all original tubes from what I can see. Which is a, a blessing and a curse. And we have the filament circuit doing its filamenty thing. I'm gonna bring her up to a 120 while remaining current limited. There we go. Whoop. What's kind of cool on these is there's a little lever that will mute and so, it already sounds microphonic. There's a lever on these that will mute the reverb springs. Where is it at? Sort of like on a... Now she's free ranging. Boop. Sometimes you could hear your voice reverberating. We've got some scratchy potentiometers. Noisy, noisy pots. Yeah. She's crispy. 
She's crispy, and if uh, maybe I can move you over just to take a peek at where the uh, current limiter is, or rather the get you off of this mount. This is where we are with respect to the light bulb limiter. Nothing significant at all. This is this is fine. I will say that despite the fact that we're looking at the original complement of filter caps, despite that, the background noise is negligible. Nice. Just very noisy. You know what scares me about working on these old Ampegs is some of these knobs are so fragile, especially if you have a rotary switch type of a control. You better, better be careful. So obviously, this thing needs a little love with respect to nice. This thing's gonna beautiful. This thing's gonna need a little bit of love with respect to just basic routine maintenance. We're gonna do some socket cleaning and maybe that'll take us away towards our goal of getting a nice quiet amp. Let me show you what I was referring to regarding that retractable tube shield. Isn't that cool? It's almost sexual. Certainly sensual, if nothing else. I'm gonna retension these guys. She just needs some love. Uh, regardless, I'm gonna have to crack her open and take levels. On the opposite side of this chassis, you will find a cover plate. And the cover plate, if I'm not mistaken, will be Phillips head screws. Though sometimes you will find, um, actually, I could be, actually, I think I'm mistaken. I, I think it's actually these guys. Where's my hand? It's actually these guys, I bet. Yeah, but if you're looking at this before I even open my mouth, I bet your back, hamstrings, forearms, wrists, fingers, and neck instantly became inflamed. Super cool amps, however. But man, Ampeg does not make it easy. Ampeg wants you to suffer. And the worst part of it is, is these. I get the whole shock mount, the whole suspension thing, but come on, man. Not really necessary. These uh, little rubber bushings down here have not dry rotted yet, which I'm shocked. And I'm, I'm actually equally surprised to see that the original hardware is still, still in place here. Usually that's gone by now, and there's like one just barely hanging on. But these don't just come off. If, if you need to get to the opposite side of the chassis, and you do, these just don't fold over. So you better have some sort of a block arrangement or, or something, or else you're going to be um, spending uh, quite a bit of time just getting these guys off. I should say removing these. It's PG, folks. Mine out of the gutter. So anyway, this is where we're starting this thing off. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Bye. All right, Mohammed. One of the issues with your amp is that your home balance pot has failed and is not adjustable. So I'm going to replace this with an artificial center tap comprised of two 100 ohm resistors to ground. Bye. All right, so we are looking at the little cover plate, which is situated over the, the preamp and the reverb tube section. And you can see this, it's a little bit of wax. And it looks like uh, this little drip developed from the, the, the melted wax pouring onto the opposite side of this plate and then obviously running down and cooling off. Let's find out what that is. Obviously it's gonna be related to a capacitor, right? But let's see. And it is. Now does this indicate 
uh, a severe issue? No, it doesn't. Because these tubes get incredibly hot. Incredibly hot. So it's, it's not surprising that anything adjacent is going to be uh, treated to the, the lovely warmth. Now, um, just a cool little detail that you may not be aware of. These tube shields are, are legitimately grounded. Check that out. Let's take a look. How cool is that? Bet you weren't expecting to see that. But uh, Ampeg and uh, the same spirit as uh, any German auto manufacturer tends to over-engineer and complicate things where not required. But for the sake of being clever, they do that well. All right, here we go. So we're going to get inside of this control panel the proper way. Here you go. It's all you need for box cleaning. Beautiful three tube reverb circuit in these old Ampegs. Just gotta tell you, it's probably my favorite reverb of all time. Gorgeous. Not drippy like the Fender stuff, but ambient. Just spacious. It it transports you to a better place. I love it. You'll hear some intermittent static or shot noise. A little sizzly noise. It's not plate resistors. No, it's it's the noisy tubes. I, I cleaned your pins. Again, the tube sockets. Um, you have very, very microphonic uh, phase inverter tube. It's a, an oddball tube. I think this one's a runs a pentode. A pentode configuration for your phase inverter, if I'm not mistaken. And you could hear it. You could hear the noise reverberating. Back over the fence to you. And we'll see what you want to do about those tubes back.